time for Brief Applause, featuring stories from the WVIZ PBS Emmy Award winning arts and culture program Applause, with your host, Dee Perry. As a little girl in post World War II England, Lillian Terrell played on the rubble heaps left behind by bombings, finding those heaps more interesting than manicured parks. As an adult, Terrell has created stunning tapestries that blend her taste for the unusual with her social conscience. That blend was very much on display at a Spaces Gallery retrospective of her work in early 2006. When I sat down with Lillian in the Ravenna farmhouse and studio she shares with her sculptor husband, Brinsley Terrell, she told me that her signature works, called Disaster Blankets, were the result of a chance encounter at a turning point in her life. <laughs> I had just finished a very big commission and it had taken me almost two years to do it and um, I, I just felt like I wanted something different because it was basically a land skyscape and um, that's when I decided I wanted to change what I was doing. I was a little tired with what I had been doing and this piece had sort of culminated into a very intricate work and and we passed a building that was being burnt by the fire department and um, we stopped to look at it and it was so wonderful with the beams the fire licking across the beams and the smoke and the flames in the background that I thought I'd like to weave that <laughs> <laughs> and and that's what I did with the first one and um, it was it was really fun to weave you know but mostly blacks and oranges and yellows and some reds and I thought gosh that was a lot of fun and, and so the next one I did would be the terrorist which was again a figure against a background of fire and um, and from then on, I just started going from one disastrous aspect to another. Well, when I met her, she was, um, she'd make a lot of her own clothes. She made her wedding dress. And, um, and then when we had children, she, she was knitting clothes for them and making clothes for them. And she made me some sweaters. Um, I should have worn one, actually. Uh, there was a lot of fiber and stuff around, and we had a good friend called Janet Taylor who taught at Kent State with me. Um, and we all got sort of interested in the looms and things, and, and then we saw an ad in the newspaper um, for a garage sale, and it said they had a loom. So we went round and we saw this fairly new but rather rickety little loom, and we bought this and brought it back. And They'll ask Janet how to, to, to how, how to do it. <laughs> and she said, well, come and sit in, in on one of my classes. And they went and sat in on the class. Um, and then sort of took it from there. When she played as a child, it was on piles of rubble, of, of buildings that had been knocked down by bombs. Uh, she met her husband at an anti-war rally in London. Uh, I think that, that people who are politically active come from all personality types. Uh, when she, in the early in 1970, uh, she, her husband was a professor at Kent State University and everybody who lived there was dragged into politics whether they wanted it or not. The landscapes did very well. I'd enter them in shows. Um, you know, you, you send away to shows and they would um, be accepted and maybe win a prize and, and then um, a lot of corporations started buying them and the skyscapes too, a lot of corporations bought them and when I started doing other kind of works, I really knew that I was sort of giving up my income. <laughs> But, um, you know, Prince has always been very supportive and he said, don't worry about it, you just do what you want to do. And um, so I did and it was 
many, many years before I sold a piece. When one encounters her work, it's beautiful, it's lush, it's just breathtaking. Um, but then, as you get close to it, you realize that the subject matter is horrific. So that you're, com you're completely f frozen by the subject matter. Um, John Peralt, in an essay in The Village Voice in 1990 about a couple, some of her disaster blankets, said that her work is fear frozen in thread. And I think the importance of it is she does political work. Um, it's also beautiful work. But the importance of it is that it resonates today just as much as it did 20 years ago when, when some of these blankets were made. Some of the work that she creates takes two years to finish so that one knows that she's working on important, important artwork. Nothing frivolous. She's very, very serious um, because to stand in front of a loom that's 12 feet wide and eight, eight or nine feet high and work on the same piece for two years takes dedication. Yes, it's insane because the, the nature of the loom is that uh, you, you thread all these, these warps up and you start weaving it, but you weave it from the back so that you don't really see what you're making. And you weave it a, a sixteenth of an inch up from the bottom. Um, and, and as you weave it, it gets rolled onto this roll, so you never really see what you're making until the thing is finished. Um, which is where the importance of the drawings come, because the, the drawings sort of hold the image she's trying to get at and, and give her a, 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 a sort of idea of where she is. She's never really going to know what she's made until six months, seven months, eight months later when the piece gets finished. Um, and, and we have this sort of scary day when it gets cut off the loom and, and sort of pinned onto the wall and you stand back and look at it and, and Lil is, is always sort of, oh my God, that, that's not good. That doesn't work. I don't like that. We're all standing around saying, no, that's fantastic. One of the issues was that Lillian had become increasingly ill uh, due to a blood disease. And in an artist's life, it's, it's, it's crucial for understanding what they do to see their work together. Her work is really one of the monumental creations, uh, one of the monumental artistic contributions of the Northern Ohio region to the life of, of the country and in fact the world. These pieces have been celebrated in museums and exhibitions internationally. Bill had thought about um, organizing a show of her work before and we've always been interested in her work but I think the fact that she is ill did, did play a part in it. Right before the exhibition opened, Lillian walked me through all of the pieces and she kind of lovingly touched areas and remembered uh, weaving a certain part of something, you know, 20 years ago and talked about the, the difference in, in the fibers, the, di the contrast in the images and how much she loved creating the work. You know, if I'm going to spend so long weaving a piece, it's, it's like I've got to do something that I feel is worth weaving. And the political context give me that so that um, I feel like if I take an image that has been fleeting on the television and um, can freeze it in time because the tapestry is such that people relate to the way it's been woven and how long it takes. It's one of the few mediums that people look at and think, oh, it must have taken ages to make. For more stories on Northeast Ohio's rich and vibrant cultural community, tune into Applause with Dee Perry, Thursday nights at 7.30 on WVIZ-PBS. And be sure to join Dee for Around Noon, weekdays at noon on 90.3 WCPN, shining the spotlight on our local arts and culture scene.